Okay, today we're going to learn a little bit more about exponential functions. So we're in lesson 22.1. Um, it's in Springboard book uh, here. If, if you're looking for the page number and wanting to do it actually in your Springboard book, it is page 325. So... <clears throat> We're going to practice with exponential functions. There's a lot of things, a lot of basic things that we need to know about exponential functions as far as in this class. So we're going to start off um, all the exponential functions that you do in class um, and on tests or quizzes are going to be in the form just like this in a word problem where you're going to have to answer several questions about it. So let's look at this first word problem and we'll go through each piece and answer each of these questions. So, the, the word problem starts out with, the National Association of Realtors estimates that on average the price of the house doubles every 10 years. Tony's grandparents bought a house in 1960 for $10,000. Assume that the trend identified by the National Association of Realtors applies to Tony's grandparents' house. So, basically, you have a house that's been purchased in 1960 for $10,000. It says that it doubles every 10 years. So number one, let's zoom in here. Number one says, what is the value of Tony's grandparents' house in 1970 and 1980? Well, based on the fact that it doubles every 10 years, and in 1960 it was 10000 in 1970... It should be twenty thousand dollars. Hey, um, because it doubles every ten years, hey, it's doubling ten thousand, which is twenty thousand. Now, can you guess what nineteen eighty will be? If you said forty thousand, then you are correct, since it's doubling. A doubling of 20000 is 40000 So number two says compute the difference in value from 1960 to 1970. What's the difference in value? Well, difference is another word for subtraction. So what is the difference in the value from 1960 to 1970? It means to subtract the values. So... In 1960, it was 10000 and in 1970, it's 20000 So what's the difference between the two? Hey, the difference between 10000 to 20000 is $10,000. Okay. Then, number three says to compute the ratio of the 1970 value to the 1960 value. Ratio a, is a fraction. Ratio is just another word for a fraction. So we're going to make a fraction of the value in 1970 to the value of 1960. So the value in 1970 was 20,000. And the value of 1960 was 10,000. And I'm sure you've learned when you do this fraction, you can just cancel out the zeros. And you'll see that the ratio is 2 to 1, or just 2. That ratio becomes important as we move on and into next cycle as well. <clears throat> the next piece here is to fill in the data table. So here you have decades uh, since 1960. These are the decades since 1960. The house, the value of the house since 1960. So we count the decades as zero. Because in 1960, that's the time that he bought the house. A decade hadn't passed yet. So that's, that's zero decades. And he bought it for 10000 And decade number one, so in 1970, we already, found, uh, we already discussed that that was 20000 Because it's doubling. And in decade number two, we already discussed that was in 1980, it was 40,000. 
Now, in decade number three, the trend should continue in doubling. It should keep doubling and doubling and doubling. So what do you think 1990 would be? If you said 80,000, then you are correct. Decade number four. Should be able to figure it out by now. It should be 160,000. And decade number five in 2010, if we keep the doubling, 320,000. So that is what the value of the home will be each decade. We're going to go over here now and find the difference and the ratio, just like we did in problems two and three. So the difference, remember the difference between, it's the difference between these two numbers. What's the difference between these two numbers? We already discussed that. That was 10,000. And that's a comma. Then you have the difference of these numbers, 20 to 40. That would be 20,000. And then the difference between the next two numbers is 40,000. Difference between the next numbers is 80,000. And the next one is 160,000. And the ratio. We already saw this. The ratio from 1960 to 1970, we already figured that out. The ratio was 2. Now, if you keep moving on, hey, and we keep doing this, 40, hey, 40 over 20, 40,000 over 20,000 also has a ratio of 2. And 80,000 over 40,000 also has a ratio of 2. And you'll see that the trend continues with the ratio all being 2. And that's very, very important. That's a very distinct characteristic of an exponential function. What you are multiplying it by each time um, needs to be constant. Okay. Now, number five, what are the patterns that you recognize in the table? So I'm going to give you a minute here to look at the table. Just look at the table and what sort of trends or patterns do you see in the table? Please write them here below and then or pause the video and write them and then unpause it for the answers. Okay, patterns. What patterns do you recognize in the table? Hey, some of the patterns that you should have been able to recognize is that as you go through the decades, one of the patterns and one of the trends is the doubling factor. Hey, each value is twice or two times the amount below, or two months above it, I should say. So 40,000 is 2 times 20. 80,000 is 2 times 40,000. And 160 is 2 times. So each value is 2 times more. And same thing, actually, with the differences. They're also 2 times each other. Another trend that you should have seen is that the ratio, or we call the multiplying factor, the ratio is constant. A, and that should always be the case. What you are multiplying each each time should be the same. Okay. So that's number five. We're actually going to go down here. We're actually going to skip number six. You can go ahead and cross that out. And then move on to number seven. Number seven says use the data from the table to graph the order pairs of decades since 1960 on the coordinate grid below. So you're basically going to graph the data. Okay, So on the bottom down here, on the x-axis, is the decade since 1960. So you have 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you don't need to go any further than that, because we only went to 5 decades. On the side here, is the housing values in hundred or actually in thousands. So 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, and 250,000. And it goes, it keeps going up too. So when we go to plot this, remember time zero is the time that he bought it. 
So in time zero uh, was 10,000. Decade one was 20,000. Two was 40,000. Three was 80,000. Decade four was 160,000. And decade number five was... I can't erase this. Let's see. There we go. Decade number five was 320,000. So as we graph this using a line here, it's going to look something like this. Okay. And that should look familiar. <coughs> All exponential equations are going to look the same. They're all going to have that very uh, traditional curve. They'll start out very slow and then increase very rapidly. So when you see this graph again, you're going to know that it's an exponential. As opposed to a linear equation where a linear equation goes in a straight line. Okay. Number eight. The data comparing the number of decades since 1960 and the value of the house are not linear. Okay, so it's basically saying that this graph up here and the table of values is not linear. Why is it not linear? You have to understand what makes a linear equation before you can say something is linear or not. So what are some of the things that make things linear? Okay. Things like, well, a linear would be a line, okay? So they call it linear or linear. Linear has a straight line. Linear is a straight line. That's what makes it a, a, a linear. The other thing is the constant rate of change. The common difference between all the values in a linear function are the same. Okay, the common difference is the same. So if we look at this exponential function, you'll notice that in the table, it's Go back up to the table. Notice that the common difference here is not the same. And that's one thing that makes it exponential. The common difference is not the same ever. So you have this here. The, these are all different values where if it were linear, they'd all be the same. Okay. Another thing by looking at the graph is just the way it looks. A linear equation would go in a straight line. Whereas exponential has this very traditional uh, sloping, it starts off slow and then skyrockets up. That is an exponential function. Whereas a linear function would go in a straight line. Okay, so that's the answer to number eight. Number nine, using the information that you have regarding the housing value, predict the value of the house in the year 2020. Keep in mind that we already found the value of the house in 2010, and we know it doubles every 10 years, so what do you think the value of the house would be in 2020? If you guessed 640,000, then you are correct. If you take the last value was in 2010, which was 320,000. And then, since it doubles every 10 years, we double that value and you get 640,000. And number 10, Tony would like to know what the value of the house was in 2005. Using the same data, predict the house value in 2005. So, here, this one's a little more complicated. Because they want the value of the house in 2005, if we look at our data table here, 2005 is somewhere in the middle of this of these values right here. So here you have to just kind of estimate what you think the value would be. Knowing that in 2000 it was 160 and in 2010 it was 320,000. So, go ahead and pause the video and think about it. What do you think the value 
of the house would be in 2005. <clears throat> okay. One of the ways to find out the value in 2005 is literally to cut it in half. You know that going from 160 to 320, it's going up by 160,000 total. But if we want to find the middle part, we just cut that value in half. Instead of increasing by 160, it would only increase by half of 160. So on a half of 160 is 80. So it would just increase by $80,000. And $80,000 plus 160 is 240,000. So if you got 240,000, then you did a good job. 240,000. The last one in this section is number 11. This one's fairly simple because we already talked about it. In exponential growth, a quantity is multiplied by a constant factor. Okay? The value of Tony's grandparents' house is growing exponentially because it is being multiplied by a constant factor for each de decade. What is the constant factor? Now, that is a what makes a thing... Uh, a function exponential is that it is being multiplied by a constant factor and we already found that out up above if you look at your table that ratio column notice how they're all two well they're all two because it's being multiplied by two every single time so the factor the constant factor for each decade is two all right the last half of this piece, you're going to try on your own. We're going to scroll all the way down to number 18. Okay. And you guys are going to do problems 18 to 22 on your own. Pause the video, finish 18 through 22 on your own, and then resume the video to check your answers. It is important... <clears throat> to make sure that you can answer these types of questions on your own. When you have a quiz and on your test, when you have to answer these questions on your own, you're not going to be able to see whether or not you got them correct until they get graded. So why don't you try and see if you can do it on your own and see how well you may do on an actual uh, test or quiz. Okay, You're going to fill in number 18. It says to use this function to fill in the data table, plug in 0 for x, plug in 1 for x, plug in 2 for x, and fill in the data table. Then, number 19, you can go over to the side here and graph your function in number 19. Number 20 says to identify the constant factor, what's being multiplied every time. 21, you're going to use this function right here to or this function right here um, and then it says t equals 2.5 well there's a t in the function and t is 2.5 so you can probably guess what you're going to do with this 2.5 um, to solve for this function and then that's what 21 is and then 22 asks for what year was Isaac estimating the house value so all you gotta do is find the year of 2.5 decades Okay, go ahead and pause the video, check back for the answers. <clears throat> okay, so here you can see that I've completed the table. If I plug in 0 for x, 3 to the 0, or anything for that matter, to the 0 power is 1. 1, if I put in 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 2nd is 9, 3 to the 3rd is 27, and 3 to the 4th is 81. Now, that's completing the table. The next piece here is to use the table to make a graph. So I went over here and made a graph. So zero. Let's see, one is three. And then I missed, uh, I skipped over one. But basically your graph should look something similar to this. I graphed it a little off. But it should look similar. And you can see that it has that traditional exponential look to it. Where it starts off very, very slow. Okay, and then skyrockets um, after a while. Okay. Number 20, identify the constant factor. In other words, what is it being multiplied by each time? You should have gotten three. One thing to notice 
is the correlation between this number right here and this number right here. They should be the same. Whatever is uh, the base here in this function, whatever is the base here is going to be the multiplying factor. So if it were 5 to the x, you'd multiply everything by 5. If it were 10 to the x, you'd multiply everything by 10. If it were you know, 50,000 to the x, you would just keep multiplying by 50,000. So that's an important thing to know, this correlation right here. For number 21, it says, what is the value of 2.5? Now, you're going to need a calculator later for that. But basically, you're going to write it out as 10,000 times 2 to the 2.5 power. Now, some of your calculators might do that. I know the calculator app can do that if you just type it out like that. But basically, you're going to get a value of around 56,000. 548 or something like that something very close to that <clears throat> value and then finally for which year is Isaac estimating the house's value for what year is 2.25 remember that decade 0 is in the 1960 so what is decade 2.5 Okay, well that can be found very simple by going back up to our table. So we're going to go back up to our table. Decade 2.5. Decade 2.5, well here's 2, here's 3. Decade 2.5 would be right in here. What year would be 2.5? Or 0.5 between 2 and 3. If you guess the year 1980, then you are, or 1985, then you are correct. The year should have been 1985. Okay. So that's that. Hey, your, uh, you are to next, after watching these video notes, then to move on to the practice. Uh, because I'm gone today to a, uh, know that for me to judge and whether or not you understand what you're supposed to be doing, uh, the work that is on Canvas is going to be collected. It is homework if you don't finish. If you go to Canvas, read through Canvas, you'll see that you need to do the practice. The practice is right, part of it's right here. It's 23 through 28. And you can do this, these questions here using this table, 23 through 28. The second half of the practice is also in Springboard, but you're going to have to go back to Canvas and click the link um, using page 3, I think it's 339. I think it's page 339, uh, questions 1 through 5, but it's all in Canvas there. You also have a CUDA worksheet you need to do and an IXL worksheet, or sorry, IXL uh, activity that you're going to need to do. All of it's going to be collected on Shobi and submitted through Shobi or submitted by paper, depending on what you use, um, the next class. So if you have any questions, send me a message on Canvas.